Hello, I'm Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the LP News Network. We're here today with Bob Maraca, the Vice President of Loss Prevention at the National Retail Federation, and Joe LaRocca, Vice President of Retail Partners, and a former Vice President of LP at the NRF as well. The NRF is the world's largest retail trade association, representing discount and department stores, home goods and specialty stores, Main Street merchants, grocers, wholesalers, chain restaurants, and internet retailers from the United States and more than 45 countries. Retail is the nation's largest private sector employer, employer supporting one in four U.S. jobs. That's 42 million working Americans, contributing $2.6 trillion to the annual GDP. Retail is a daily barometer of the nation's economy. The NRF's loss prevention community works with retail LP professionals, law enforcement, and government agencies to protect retailers, people, assets, reputations, and brands. Led by Bob Maraca and the LP Advisory Council, comprised of retail senior leaders from across the nation, the NRF provides research, preparedness guides, and industry news through their various media outlets and on the D&D Daily itself. The NRF Protect Annual LP Conference is the largest event of its kind in the nation and is the nation's leading retail-specific event for those who protect retail brands, assets, people, and profits. This conference draws attendees from a wide range of fields, including loss prevention, asset protection, IT, and cybersecurity. And with that, we'd like to welcome both Bob and Joe. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. Thank you, Gus. Thank you, Gus. You know, my first question, Bob, is that this past year has certainly been traumatic. Uh, probably one of the most impactful years we've ever seen in retail. So the first question to both of you is, how is the e-commerce growth impacting the LP industry and the executives? Yeah, it's a great point, Gus. It's, it's traumatic and dramatic. It, it is changing uh, as we speak. Interestingly enough, when you look at that, uh, I think this year on the brick and mortar side, where overall the, the NRF thought the holiday season was going to grow at about 3.7%. Mm. The numbers just came out on the 15th, and it's 3.1%, so it's a little off. That's uh, on the brick and mortar side. The good news was, on the digital side of the world, uh, there was a 9% increase, right. a huge jump uh, to over $100 billion for the first time uh, for the holiday season. And then, if you look back, on a 10-year slant of overall, it's about 126 billion. It goes from about 500 billion to 626 billion this year. So you see steady growth, just not as much as we would like. Now we're competing with ourselves, brick and mortar, mm. digital. So sometimes the NRF looks at it now as retail is retail is retail. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where we sell and where we return. We're, we're omni-channel. We're, we're trying to mesh all of the technology with the old experience uh, of positive uh, shopping mm -hmm. for people that still want to come into the store and feel in touch with what they buy. So it's a challenge, and that is kind of a dramatic change, if you will. Mm. Joe? Well, I think Bob brings up some excellent points, and it, and it is a challenge as the business shifts, but it's really the evolution of how we move through society, right? We change from hard PCs to tablets to cell phones now that could power a spaceship in the old days. And the loss prevention business is going to change with it. It's not just going to be about managing stores locally. It's going to be truly a global business, and that includes cyberspace. But we're still going to move, manage, acquire, buy, sell, return, control, and secure all of these products. And that will just involve a different type of loss prevention executive and skill set. Mm. We're in the gig economy. The, the days of communicating through pages and pages of hard copy memos, and then the email, we're now in 140 characters or less. That's the attention span. When you can go online and order a helicopter through Uber, the business is really gonna change that much. I think what concerns me the most and where we are, really have an opportunity are how we change our control process, our mm -hmm. screening and risk analytics with it. As an example, the old days, you could only buy products online. Then you bought them through a catalog. Then you could shop online and maybe receive the product a week or two later. And then we sped it up to three-day delivery and now one-day delivery. And now today we're doing it in just hours. Well, the screening controls we had five years ago don't work anymore. You need to screen that customer instantly. So the business is gonna change, the systems are gonna change, and the way we manage fraud and analytics are gonna change. 
the typical e-commerce person isn't going to understand what jurisdiction a fraud transaction occurs in. The new LP, the new generation of LP folks will meet, need to be fluent in all of those languages, talking to the store people, the tech people, and of course the law enforcement folks, which admittedly are way behind the times, and will need to catch up with where our businesses are heading. Mm -hmm. Certainly over the last couple of years, more and more LP folks or executives are picking up the e-commerce fraud piece. You know, whereas two, three, four years ago they weren't. That's right. Now they are. I mean, there's a, there's a wave happening there, a transition for the LP executives that's now talking to what you're referring to in the future. That's right. And it's happening right now. That's right. As that business grows, the LP executive needs to be more and more involved in the omni experience and omni retail world as well. Right. You know, from a, from an organized retail crime perspective, we now see for the first time ever where the National Retail Security Survey shows that ORC is a bigger problem than internal theft. What's your opinion on that and how does that impact the LP industry and, and will the retail industry respond to this new finding, Bob? It's a great question and, you, and you're right. Uh, 21 years of doing the NRSS and now the NRF is now uh, joining with uh, Dick Hollinger and, and uh, the University of Florida. So we've seen that change for the first time. You know, it's two pieces to this. We're doing a better job thwarting the internal threat, first of all, by education and technology and using those things to our advantage. But then secondly, we're seeing a huge rise in the organized retail crime. Mm -hmm. This year in our survey, 97% of retailers, over 97% said they've been victimized. It's the highest number in the last five years. So it's dramatically up. We're seeing uh, more and more ways for the in in individual uh, crime to take place and beat us. And they're exchanging now uh, as if they've got things online mm -hmm. and now they're exchanging for gift cards and there's a whole gift card fraud operation that takes place. Interestingly enough, we just finished the retail um, return fraud survey and it is a $9 billion problem on its mm -hmm. own. If you think about that in perspective, that's the revenue stream of the NFL, the National Football League. <laughs> so it's a huge loss to retailers and they're mixing the digital with the store and then good old fashioned, you know, counterfeit products. It's 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 growing. We've got to continue to fight that battle with our resources, not only with the analytics and the technology, but with our partners in law enforcement. So mm -hmm. it's a continuing problem. It's it's not gonna get any easier. Joe? Well I, I think Bob raises some key points and it's really an opportunity for our industry to better understand the full scope of organized retail crime. A lot of people make the mistake of looking at the National Retail Security Survey and say, shrink is up and shrink is down, and that measures ORC activity. And it couldn't be further from the truth. The NRSS really only looks at shrinkage, merchandise missing from the company. We need to look broader than that. It's the fraud losses, the paperwork losses, counterfeit goods, cargo theft, which is not usually included in the shrink numbers robberies of cash and store property not included in the shrink results. So the ORC activity, as we see criminals get more desperate, as we see a rise in drug addiction, heroin addiction, that fuels organized retail crime activity because people are desperate for their next fix. As we decrease the mental health care mm -hmm. in the country, all fuels the organized retail crime efforts. And then I think the other really important thing over the last decade Many of our retail partners have changed. Many of our law enforcement partners have changed at the federal, at the regional and local areas. So this is a constantly changing part of the business for loss prevention and for retail, where we're educating and educating and educating, not just internally, but everyone overall. You know, with active shooter and terrorism incidents now filling the news real time, both globally and here in the States, you know, how is that impacting the retail industry and in, in where do we need to be focused as an industry as it relates to the active shooter and the terrorist type issues? Gus, just recently after the San Bernardino events here in the, in the U.S. and then uh, what took place in Paris, uh, I had the opportunity to testify in front of Congress, the Homeland Security uh, uh, Committee. Uh, it was more of a round table and who was represented there were the commercial facilities retail and malls and shopping centers I was able to represent. We had uh, uh, Major League Baseball and some of those major venues and then uh, the hospitality industry. These are all of the commercial facilities uh, under Homeland Security and they're the soft targets mm -hmm. and it's a serious, serious problem and they're, they're taking it more serious. You know, we're doing, we've got these plans in place on how to respond and what to do. We work with law enforcement. 
our effort here now is to redouble the effort of vigilance. Mm -hmm. We really have to teach our people to, to conduct counter surveillance. Surveil, you know, most of these things in pre-operations, when someone wants to attack you, there's a pre-operative uh, uh, process they go through. Mm -hmm. That's the time to try and spot something unusual. So we've got to take it to the next level, teach our employees not just how to protect, you know, our four walls, but we've got to start looking out more for our neighbors, look for suspicious activity. And it sounds so simple, but see something, say something. We saw in San Bernardino, people didn't, you know, saw things but just didn't report it for whatever reasons. But the point is, we've really got to be more vigilant. We're really counting more than ever on our federal, state, and local law enforcement. And part of that, uh, that testimony, uh, we really think we're going to come out of there with more tools and more products from the federal government that will give more information to the, to the commercial facilities, including retail, and uh, kind of help us uh, thwart the problem and, and fight it. Joe? You know, in 2008, when there were a number of mall shootings around the country, where the retail industry, the NRF, and other associations partnered with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to develop the Active Shooter Program, which is now launched in stores and malls across the country. And there were some companies that were reluctant to adopt such a policy because it, it, they, they thought it would be scary for the employees. And I think in today's environment, I put Active Shooter in a bigger bucket called imminent threat. And it's one of the things that we do need to talk about. Like we talk about fires. We talk about evacuating the building. We talk about what, the, what you do when the fire alarm goes off. And the same is true if we hear gunshots or if somebody says there's an emergency in the mall, a gang to fight in the food court. How do we shut it down and how do we keep our people safe and our customers safe and, and then ultimately resume business and keep the communication lines open? I think the, the terrorist incidents that we've seen recently I mean, if you watch the, the fallout in places like Paris, where it was post 9-11 activity, retailers were searching packages of customers going inside the stores. That's what we're seeing at theme parks. It's what we might see at, at some movies theaters going forward. And you could see that happening at retail stores in the event of other incidents. But ultimately, those, now is the time to have those discussions with leadership, with law enforcement, with mall uh, shopping center partners to understand what does your policy look like, what are the response protocols, and what's your risk tolerance? Uh, what are you going to do? What are you not going to do in the event that there's an incident? And how much, ultimately, then how much information are we going to share with all the privacy debates that are going on? It's a really interesting and broad topic that we probably need to talk a lot more about. Excellent. Um, Bob, any update on the NRF Protect coming in June? Yes, I'll give you a quick update where, you know, we rebranded last year. The NRF Protect is here to stay. The NRF Protect 16s in Philadelphia. We've got our keynotes in place. We've got Ted Koppel, a uh, big name, who just wrote a book on cybercrime called Lights Out. We've got General uh, Mike Hayden, former head of the CIA, is going to keynote there. So we're, we're bringing in cyber and geopolitical experts to talk about all the things that Joe and I are talking about today. What's the threat level? How can we protect ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, Emerging Leaders Boot Camp, we sold it out last year. We're going to double the effort. We've got the, uh, a number of different things, 40 plus educational sessions. We're going to do everything we can to deal with the problems that we're dealing with today. And this is designed by retailers for retailers. And that's the nice thing about what we do at the NRF and the LP Council. So we're looking forward to an outstanding program. Well, and it was an outstanding conference last year, and right. we look forward to supporting it, being there, and having right. another day of filming. It'd be great. Ab yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to thank you both for being here today. Thank you. Before we end, I just want to thank you, Gus, for all the work that you do. It's amazing how much information I get when I go to talk to people. People say, oh, I read that in the D&D. <laughs> you're, you're, you're ahead of the game. You're cutting edge, and you, you do wonderful things. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this episode. We'd like to thank you for watching. And until next time, let's keep them all safe out there. Mm -hmm.